Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a 2021 Nissan Sentra SR in the manual transmission, which is truly rare these days. Well, first of all, most people buy SUVs and crossovers, not so much sedans, and of course, something like 98 or 99% of cars sold are all automatics. So what a joy to be able to drive a manual again, and it was a good reminder how much fun we're missing out because we are all driving automatics these days. But before I go too far with the Sentra, let me talk about the brand a bit. Nissan is literally on the roll. They are introducing new models left and right to the point you begin to wonder what's going on with uh, Honda or Mazda or Toyota because they seem to be falling behind in terms of introduction of new models. And Nissan has a flair that is quite different from its competition. Well, first of all, it is a Japanese car based in Yokohama, but not quite the same as Toyota or Honda. Toyota is very much a, a big, uh, giant company focused on Japanese and international markets. Uh, Honda is more focused on North American market. And Nissan has roots with uh, European company Renault, which owns part of Nissan. So with the new alliance that they belong to, which includes Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Renault, uh, Nissan has a different characteristic that I think is somewhat unique, what I call Nissan DNA. And Nissan DNA has a more flair, a more character, I think, in terms of design. There's a, a lot more European influence. And the driving character is also a little bit more on the fun to drive side compared to, let's say, a Toyota. Finally, they packed the interior with new features and a lot of standard uh, equipment that you might not see in other competition. So Nissan, I think, have the right DNA and the right formula these days, despite having some trouble a few years back with some of his executive and some of the turnover that they had. Um, but all is gone now and they are um, looking bright and brighter each day. And particularly with the Nissan Sentra SR, even though it's a basic four-door model with a manual transmission, I actually really enjoy driving it this week. So now it's time for the review. And what I'm going to do is what we call engineer's audit, which is something I used to do as an automotive engineer, which is to go around the car first in terms of exterior and check for things like fit and finish, the panel fit and alignment, the paint quality, and just the overall design and engineering of this car. Then I walk into the inside of a car and do the exact same thing, review for fit and finish in terms of the parts and how the components come together. And then finally, we'll take this guy out for a drive and talk about uh, drivability, and the engine, the acceleration, and the braking. And then basically, I'll give you my engineer's perspective on what I think of this Nissan Sentra SR. So now I'm going to do an exterior audit of the paint and of the alignment of the body gaps. Uh, this car is built in Mexico, which is one of the best factories uh, in the world because I know a number of friends at Nissan who have worked at Nissan in Mexico and they claim it's a fantastic factory. So I'm sure that it's built well. Uh, but in terms of paint, when I look at uh, the way that the paint is being matched between the plastic components and the steel parts of the car, both front and back, I would give it sort of like a C plus because the paint does match in terms of the color, uh, but um, the shininess or the gloss of the paint not so good on the plastic components, which is a plastic injection part. Uh, that is true for here and here. Now, some of that can be obviously repaired or improved by the type of wax you use, but uh, that's my first impression. Also, in terms of the body integrity and alignment of the components and the parts, it is, uh, it's pretty good all around, but I have noticed some of the gaps are not consistent. So, for example, when you come around to the, this side of the, uh, the hood, the passenger side, right here the gap is reasonably consistent but you can tell it gets uh, wider and then narrower and wider again on this side it's actually better on the driver's side but it should be uh, exactly the same on both the left and the right side so i would give it a uh, sort of a c plus in terms of the gap uh, but otherwise the stamping which is the way that the parts are stamped in the stamping shop or press shop we call it is fantastic it's a very consistent panel from front to back uh, if i kneel down and look at the 
the quality of the um, quality of the panels. Uh, they're well made and they fit well. The doors do fit well as well and the rear components are all fine. I did not notice any problem here. Uh, the trunk are also good fit. Uh, overall the paint job is as I mentioned totally fine on the body side but on the plastic components maybe can be improved. So even though I pointed a few things here, Nissan does have a really good engineering group and they have a really talented people there. So the overall design and the way car has been put together is fantastic. In fact, I think the Sentra looks better than the Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic. One of the reasons why Nissan cars look so good because they have a really good designers, by the way, and they have found a way to combine things like the painted components, the glossy black, and then the grille in a, such a way that it has a really well integrated look. So this is a good design overall, but let's go inside the car and let me show you a few things about the interior of the Sentra SR and see, first of all, if it meets my expectation as an engineer and also whether or not design is good. So let's go inside now. Okay, now we are inside the Central SR. I'm going to point a few things. First of all, design-wise, I always think that Nissan does a better job than its competition. I think partly because of its French influence or at least the Renault partnership might help them to create something a little bit more with a flair. Uh, and you can tell because they mix components and materials uh, very successfully. You've got uh, carbon fiber look interior here, mixed in with a leather look and a plastic look and glossy black. But there's not too much of the glossy black because that causes uh, lots of uh, fingerprint and also they could scratch easily. So they very cleverly uh, created a design that is smart, intelligent looking, modern, um, but also functional and very usable. I like the way that uh, infotainment system is really close to you. It's a very short reach. And so design wise, I think the interior of the Sentra is better than its competition. What about the quality and the fit and the finish? Well, what I do is simply kind of hit some of the component, see if I can make it rattle. And it's pretty solid all the way through. There is some area that seems a little bit loose, but in my driving of all kinds of road, uh, there's not a hint of rattles or squeak anywhere in the car. So the interior is uh, better made, I think, than the exterior components I pointed out earlier. Also, things like the stitching along the uh, dash here, uh, it's almost perfect. I don't see any misalignment. It's a perfect stitching here and also a little bit on here. There's some stitching on the door as well, and all of them look first class. The seats are extraordinarily comfortable. Again, good design with uh, matching uh, orange stitching on the seat also. And they have a good contour. Uh, when I drive around the corner a little bit uh, fast, it's holding me in, uh, in place. And so seat design is good. The dash design is excellent. Even in terms of practicality side, uh, you get a very large glove compartment that you don't get in uh, smaller cars oftentimes. And uh, cup holders are big. You get a little bit more of a carbon fiber look here again on this SR trim. The center console is a bit, a bit small, but it is deep. So uh, plenty of uh, plenty of things to work with here. And uh, overall, I'm very pleased with, uh, with the interior of the Nissan Sentra. By the way, the Nissan Sentra SR is really well priced. SR is a flagship of the Sentra lineup, so it comes equipped with quite a few features. All of the creature comforts you expect are here, including the heated leather steering and also heated seats in the front. And you get both a USB-C and USB-A jacks for your phones and for other devices. Uh, I like this kind of swivel type uh, ventilation design, something you find uh, in the old Audi TT range before. Um, but you also find in some of the sports cars these days uh, and overall functionality and design is superb on the interior and uh, even the steering controls are actually really good. On many cars it is too busy or too cumbersome but I found on this Nissan Sentra SR it's very easy to navigate, the buttons are big and uh, they are very tactile so the overall functionality, design and engineering I think is first class on this SR. Before we go to our driving audit let's take a look at the back seat to see if it's any good. So the surprising thing about this Sentra is that even though it's a compact four-door sedan, there's actually a huge amount of space and even a six-foot friend of mine was able to fit in the back with no problem at all. Reasonably good headroom, but more importantly, the legroom and the comfort of the seats is outstanding. So I'm kind of saddened by the fact that everyone is moving toward SUV when they can probably buy something like this 
a four-door sedan, and it will meet most of their needs. It's got good room inside, a good trunk space. The seats do fold down, so you can put something big and long as well. There's probably no need to buy SUV for everyone, uh, but obviously that's the trend of the industry these days. But when you drive a sedan like this, you're reminded you can have fun driving the manual transmission and still get most of the practical aspect done right. So now we are taking the Sentra SR out on the road and let me point out a few things. I do like the engine start button uh, on the console here beside the shifter where it's not blocked by the steering. I don't know why so many car companies put the uh, engine start button right behind the steering where you can't see. But on this one, easy access. Also, what I like about the manual transmission on this uh, Sentra SR is that uh, the clutch and the shifter and the way they balance each other is fantastic. I think the Japanese car companies do a really good job of that, but particularly in this Sentra SR, it's better than I expected uh, because the clutch is very easy to modulate. The shift is light and simple to move around the different gears. Uh, and overall, the feeling of the driving the manual transmission on this car is truly enhanced by the fact that it's a smooth running operation. The engine is not a very powerful engine per se, uh, but it has enough power to, uh, to give you a, a bit of a joy when you step on the gas. And um, again, because it's a manual transmission, it doesn't really matter that it doesn't have a lot of power. Uh, the torque is also reasonably uh, plentiful. And anyway, it beats, uh, beats having a CVT transmission, which uh, isn't always uh, pleasant to drive. Uh, the steering feel on this one, I think it's actually better than the Toyota Corolla because on the Corolla, the steering is very numb and there's almost, uh, almost no steering feel at all. On the Sentra SR, you get a more feedback from the road than a Corolla or even maybe Civic. And there's a little bit of resistance as you turn the steering left to the right, which gives you an impression of a, a sportier car. So again, this is not a sports sedan, uh, but it's better than expected. And I think it's actually quite fun to drive. The ride is uh, excellent for a small car. It uh, uses a set of uh, hand tires. Uh, now, I'm not fond of hand tires in general, but on this particular one with a lower profile 215, uh, 45, 18 tires, it works fantastic. It's uh, smooth, it glides well, and uh, even over some rough roads, it doesn't transmit any of the uh, bumps or the noise to the cabin, uh, and it's surprisingly well managed and well balanced. So it tracks straight, the brakes are solid, the shifting is uh, fantastic. What can I say? It's uh, a lot more than you expect in this very affordable package. Uh, the driving is more fun than you think. And uh, if you are not looking at Sentra SR manual transmission, you might be missing something because it's way better than the CVT transmission, at least from my perspective. Now, some people did comment that uh, the RPM tend to stay higher up when you're shifting between the gears, which is something that's built into most cars to help you shift smoother and also to manage the emission controls better as well. Uh, but I didn't see that as a problem on this Sentra. Uh, it uh, maintains its shifting uh, in balance and uh, I can shift from all kinds of different gears with absolutely no problem at all, including downshifting and even toe and heel can be done on this one quite easily. Even though most people wouldn't be shifting this car like a sports car, uh, I think you can actually enhance your day-to-day -day drive simply because it's just so much more fun to drive this way. By the way, the interior is surprisingly quiet for a small car. Even when you step on the gas all the way, the engine noise is minimal. And for a small car anyway, uh, the overall uh, refinement and the quality of the sound and the noise inside the cabin is, uh, is first class, uh, at least for a small car. And you'll most likely find that the passengers who are traveling with you will find the seats comfortable, the interior very quiet, and uh, they're going to be surprised by the price tag of this Nissan Sentra SR. So what can I say to conclude about the Sentra SR? Well, first of all, if you already know how to drive a manual transmission car, please take this out for a drive. And you might be surprised how much more fun it is to drive something like this compared to, uh, let's say, Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla with the automatic transmission, or even the Sentra with the CVT transmission. I think um, you will discover some new joy in driving that you didn't find before, and it's just worth giving that a try.
but even if you decide to pick the automatic transmission version of the Sentra SR, I think uh, it is surprisingly good, more so than you expect in a car of this price range. And even though Nissan Sentra might be overlooked in comparison to Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla, it's definitely worth a look, even in comparison to those uh, mainstream cars, because it's more fun to drive, it's a good value, and the design is beautiful inside and out. So please let me know in the comments below if you had a chance to drive this Sentra in comparison to the Corolla or Civic or Mazda 3. Let me know what you think because personally, I think this is quite a good value and it's a lot of fun to drive. Thanks again and thank you so much for watching my channel. I'm signing off for now.